add a, a main method at the very bottom of this class, so just before the closing bracket. Um, the purpose of this is just so that we can run a little bit of code on our own uh, to create a new mileage tracker object and just print it to the terminal. Okay. Um, so we haven't done this in a little while, but the way we write a main method for a class in Java is we say public static void main string square brackets args. And if you're thinking, wait a minute, I still don't know what half that stuff means. You're right, and that's okay. We will eventually dive into what is the static thing and what is the string with the square brackets. Um, for now, this is just the method we have to write to have Java run our programs. So we're just going to keep writing it for now. No, that's, that's a great summary of what static is. Absolutely. So we're just going to write two lines in here. Um, I'm going to create a local variable of type mileage tracker and just call it tracker. And I'm going to assign to it the reference return by saying new mileage tracker. And I'm going to use this as an opportunity to demonstrate calling the constructor we wrote that takes two parameters. So I'll just scroll up here to remind us. It's been a little while. We wrote this constructor here that takes one parameter for the initial miles driven and another parameter for the initial fuel consumed. Um, so let's use that constructor. And the way I do that is I'm going to pass those two values I want when I say new mileage tracker. So I'm going to say, let's start with 100.0 miles driven and 4.0 gallons of gasoline consumed. And then let's actually just print the variable tracker. So that's going to print the object referenced by tracker. And we've printed other objects before. We've printed like rectangles in the last unit. Um, and we print strings all the time. Um, but let's see what happens when we print our mileage tracker object. So when you have these, these few lines written, you can compile your class or hit Control K on Windows or Command K on the Mac. And then we can switch to the BlueJ project window and right click on the mileage tracker class, not the test class, but the tracker class, and actually select the main method to run. And when we do, here is what's displayed in the terminal mileage tracker at, in this case, on my computer, it's 4F90478D. Yours might be different, probably different. Um, what is that? What is being printed to the terminal? Any ideas? Yeah, got it. It is, okay? This, this, hexadecimal number 4F90478D or whatever printed on your terminal, it is the reference value, the address in the computer's memory of this object. Okay. I just think it's cool to see it actually printed in the terminal. In our conceptual model, when we have our post-it notes and we write the, the reference on the post-it note for our variables that refer to objects, this is what's written on the note. Or when we have the whole sheet of paper that represents an object in the computer's memory with all the different properties. This is what's written in the upper right corner. Okay? It is the reference. Now, as cool as I think that is, this doesn't really help us any. In reality, it's important that we understand what references are, but we don't really care what the value is. Um, so, we can add another method to our class to print whatever we want instead of having the reference be printed by default. So let's do that. Let's do that together. Let's make this more useful for us. So before the main method here, let's add a new method, public visibility. It's going to return a reference to a string object. 
and the name has to be exactly to string. Lowercase t at the beginning, capital S in string. This method is going to create a new string and concatenate a bunch of strings together and return a reference to that new string. And whatever string is returned by this method will then be printed to the terminal. Just to be clear, this method doesn't print anything. It's actually more useful for us if it just builds the string because then we could use this method, sure, to print to the terminal, but we can also print to a graphical user interface instead, or we could send it to a physical printer, or we could send it over the network, or we could write it to a file. It gives us a lot more flexibility. So let's create a local variable of type string called str, and I'm gonna say equals new string. And I'm gonna format this like we see the rectangle print and everything ends up in square brackets. So I'm gonna do a whole bunch of string concatenation. I'm gonna start with the bin, and then I'm gonna keep using the string concatenation methods. So like get bin. I'm gonna split this over multiple lines so it's a little bit easier to read. I'll put semicolons between things. We'll do miles driven and call the accessor method for that. And I, I could, I'm inside the mileage tracker class. I could just directly access the instance variables bin and miles driven. It is considered best practice though to keep calling the accessor methods even within the class. Um, so I'm gonna do that. It's, it's not that much extra work. Fuel consumed call that accessor method, add in my units. And then even though it's not an instance variable, I think it's really good to see what the mileage is. So I'm actually gonna add that to the string and call the get mileage method. And that's a miles per gallon. And then I simply return the string. That's a lot to type, so I'll give you a moment to type that. But when you are done, compile it, run it again, and notice that now in the terminal, the reference is no longer printed, which didn't really have much use for us. Instead, the entire state of the object, this string, is printed instead. And we'll see that the miles driven are 100, and the fuel consumed is four gallons. Oh, it's pretty good. I also want to show you one more trick now that we're in our, our second unit. I purposefully totally avoid this in the first unit, but I've noticed some of you have already figured this out and some of you have asked questions about this. Um, and that relates to this whole idea of when we have a, a local variable of type string, um, assigning it to a new string, and then in parentheses, like quoting whatever we want that new string to be. Um, strings, the string class, yes, it's a class, but it has some special behaviors in Java because it's so commonly used. And one special behavior, Please excuse this interruption. Can we please release freshmen with the last name starting with the letter A through S A K? Those students, please go to the end pack at this time. Um, 
one of the special features of strings is that a double quoted string, like this highlighted code right here, when Java sees something in double quotes, that's a string literal. It's the only class that has a literal. And when Java sees that, it automatically makes a new string object and initializes it to the sequence of characters inside of the quotes. So we don't actually need to say new string. We can just concatenate all this stuff together because Java will automatically make this a new string object. And then the concatenation operator will make another new string when it combines these two together and so on and so forth. So I kind of want to show you that shortcut because you're going to see that more and more in code and I don't want it to be confusing. I don't show that in the first unit because I think we're struggling enough just to make new objects and we don't need to see like special cases and exceptions. So that's why I wait till now. All right.